right. Hello, everybody. This is Amy News and Conversation, and I'm here today with Mike Busticker, and we're going to be talking about a new survey that's coming out of one of Amy's HTM communities. That's the uh, Healthcare Technology Management. But uh, Mike, let me leave the introductions to you. Can you tell me who you are and, and, and what committee you're working with? Certainly. So Mike Busticker, I'm uh, the Enterprise Director for HTM at Intermountain Healthcare. Uh, in Salt Lake City, Utah, actually covering, Mon we've got hospitals in Montana, Idaho, Utah, Colorado, uh, and uh, clinics in a number of other states. Uh, I've been in the industry for 40 years. I'm actually the chair of the uh, TMC for Amy, as well as uh, on the board of directors for Amy. And for those who don't know, what, what is the TMC? What does that stand for? It's the Technology Management Council. Beautiful. Yeah. And our, our TMC, I know you guys have been very busy with uh, surveys throughout the years. I, you know, we've, we've been seeing it on our, our leadership group side as well, but the surveys that are coming out of both of these groups tend to touch on things like uh, retention, or I believe the gray areas survey just came out from your group, which was uh, talking about kind of where we draw the line at different hospitals between something that might be maintained by HTM versus something that might be taken care of by facilities versus healthcare IT departments. Um, that's kind of along the lines of what we'll be talking about today, but uh, I understand that this is specifically home healthcare. So can you tell me a little bit about that? What is home healthcare? Certainly. So um, really real quick on the TMC. So one of the things we try to do is focus on a couple of projects per year that we divide mm -hmm. the, the, the committee members on to different subcommittees to take a look at items that impact healthcare technology management and provide guidance documentation for individuals in the field. So not necessarily, we're not providing standards and saying this is what you need to do, but actually providing that guidance. And one of those, one of the things that we're really looking at now as technology has continued to advance and that's home healthcare. And it's different than telehealth. So we're not talking telehealth services. Mm -hmm. We're talking actual home health. So here at Intermountain, uh, as an example, we have 35,000 pieces of medical equipment in the inventory for home health. And we are actually now installing things like dialysis machines. We're uh, doing chemotherapy treatments, uh, infusion, ventilators, uh, O2 monitor or O2 um, concentrators and things that we're putting into the patient home. And now it's requiring that our uh, our caregivers or our frontline HTM technicians have to go into those patients' homes to install the devices, service the devices, uh, do the PMs and calibrations, keep track of recalls. So the TMC really wanted to take a look at how is the, the industry, um, how is home health impacting the industry and what are we seeing across uh, the country when it comes to healthcare systems and, their, and the HTM involvement in home health? Now, a lot of our viewers might be thinking about this in terms of they might be seeing movement in certain major, uh, not manufacturers, but actually distributors who are creating new home health care devices and uh, putting them in in, in homes. So the one example that comes to mind immediately is Best Buy Health. I don't know if you've uh, been following up what's going on there, but they're putting a lot of new devices into uh, patients' homes. It, but those are mostly patient monitoring devices, um, You know, whether it be something as simple as a, uh, a sensor in a toilet or something as complex as, as a dialysis machine like you're talking about. Um, is that does this uh, survey that we're looking at here, does that cover this entire spectrum or is it narrowed down even more? No, I, I think it covers that entire spectrum. So we're taking mm. a look at it from what are we seeing out there? And then, you know, as we continue to progress with this survey, as well as the information that it will be providing from a guidance perspective uh, on this, we want to take a look at things, uh, some of the challenges being faced, like how do you put these devices into your maintenance management system? And how are you ensuring, how are we going to ensure cybersecurity uh, and the safe transmission of data and information, uh, whether that's across the Wi-Fi network or, or, or an internet provider that the home health uh, patient has? 
as well as, I mean, we're talking about individuals going in and tapping into water supplies, uh, putting in drains, um, you know, because if you look at, if you look at the information from a home health perspective, patients recover quicker uh, and are much more comfortable in their own homes receiving that, mm. uh, that medical care and treatment. So it, it, that really, in, in looking at it from the HTM perspective, you know, our, our technicians anymore are not located in the shop, in the hospital and going out to the floors. Now they're being required to actually go to a patient's home. So how do we, uh, how do we really protect that data, protect the information, develop the soft skills, uh, understand um, a, a safety and security perspective, um, as well as ensuring that we're tracking all of that equipment from every standpoint, whether it's uh, the preventative maintenance, service and repair, uh, recalls, all of that uh, included as well. Uh, you know what, uh, you mentioned the technical skills, which is kind of a gimme. But this, I was glad you brought up the soft skills too, because a lot of the HTM professionals that I talk to, if I ask them what is different in the field from if you compare now to say 10, 15 years ago, a lot commonly they're saying, well, I'm an interacting with people more. I'm not just in the basement fixing devices every day and nobody sees me. Is, is this something that you expect is going to be a, a pretty common response in terms of training, things like that? I believe so. Because you're, you're talking about patients now when we're looking at it, these dialysis machines or other devices that are being stall, installed in the patient's home, there's, there's not a clinical staff member or a clinical caregiver that's on site uh, mm. to, be, uh, to be hooking up the equipment or running the equipment. It's going to be done by the patient. It's going to be done by the patient's family. Uh, so there may be an HTM individual that enters a home and, and goes in to do maybe a preventive maintenance inspection on a dialysis machine, and all of a sudden they've got three family members and the patient there, and they're all asking them questions. So now it's a you know it, it's an opportunity and and really a need to develop those soft skills and be able to talk with uh, those family members with those patients uh, as they continue to receive their treatment and care. Very cool. So for a little clarity for our viewers, this is what the uh, TMC is pushing out is specifically a survey that is going out to health systems. And is it also going to be third party maintenance providers? Anybody like that? Absolutely. The more information we can collect, the more data we can collect on the survey, the better off it's going to be. So we can, I mean, when we took a look at the gray area document and we sent that survey out, you know, we received just under, I think it was just under 200 responses back and, and we really like to see more participation on the home health piece because again all of that data and information that we can gather we can really put together some substantial uh, you know guidance and, and and a document for the the industry and the field to look at as this continues to progress we're seeing you know we're seeing a 10 percent growth in home health every year uh, and it, it's only going to continue because again, if I had the option as a patient to either receive my treatment in a hospital or an outpatient center or at home, I'm going to select at home. So the more information that we can collect from the field and the industry, uh, the better off we're going to be. And the, the really um, the more clarity and, and, and uh, information that we can get from the field, we can get into the document and send out to the field. Beautiful. This is, this almost feels like a, a post-COVID pulse check on the industry, on the profession. Um, what are you ex not expecting, but what would you see as success for this? You know, if you had information that you could share with your peers uh, in this industry, what would are you hoping it's going to look like? I one of the things that I'd like to do is I'd like to understand from an industry industry perspective what we're seeing out there in healthcare institutions, whether it's healthcare systems, whether mm -hmm. it's standalone community hospitals, uh, rural facilities, uh, what are we seeing out there from, in, from the HTM perspective and involvement in home health? Uh, you know, we have here at, at our organization, we have five uh, technicians that are assigned to the home health alone, just home health. That's all they do. Uh, is home health equipment. And then we've got four, uh, an additional four individuals that are assigned to the power chair shop. 
So they work with patients day in and day out on, uh, on modifying and creating and, and getting them power chairs that, uh, that they can use for everyday life. And, and again, those other five, all dedicated to home health. Oh, I bet. And how new are these positions? So we've been doing it for quite some time here hmm. at Intermountain. Uh, that, that group was separate a few years ago. We rolled them into the entire HTM department. Uh, and we see some of the some of the individuals that are there absolutely love uh, their job and what they do and working with patients every day. Uh, I think it's, uh, you know, it, it's really unique, uh, yeah. a unique position and, and they just love that. And uh, so we, we really, um, you know, we really strive to hold on to those techs and really keep them in the positions that they're in. But I think that's what we want to see from an industry perspective is how many organizations out there are that involved with the home health? How many of them have home health facilities uh, located throughout a state or a region where equipment's going out to patients and then coming back to those? And, and what's the HTM involvement? Uh, what's the HTM involvement from a hospital perspective when a patient goes home and there's medical equipment that goes with them? Uh, how how involved is HTM from that perspective? So I think that's what the survey is looking for. Uh, really, the amount of data and information on how involved is HTM. And I think we're going to see it across the entire spectrum. We're going to see organizations that are fully involved. And we're going to see organizations that at the current time, they're, they're not touching any of that uh, any of those devices, but I think, it, you know, it, it's, it's looking and it's moving to the future where they're going to, it, it's going to require involvement. Right. Now, so for anybody who's, who's watching right now, we're going to have a link in the description to the survey. So if, as you're watching this, you're like, Hey, that's me. I should be filling that out. Please go and do it. Share it with your peers. Uh, you know, even, even if it's at another healthcare system, absolutely try to get this spread because the more information Mike and his team have, uh, the better they can come up with uh, best practices and, and you know, that kind of guidance, not necessarily standards, but just suggestions and guidance for the community at large. Uh, Mike, is there anything else that you wanted to share with us before we wrap this up? No, I just, uh, again, it, it really is important that we get the, the perspective from all, um, all segments of the industry. So we're looking at uh, maintenance management systems. You know, we've got a number of CMMS uh, organizations out there. And how involved are they in the home health industry? Independent service organizations, in-house programs, uh, manufacturers. Really, the more data and information that we can collect, the better it's going to be. Because really, the end result, what we're looking for is to make sure that we're providing the best quality and the safest program and the safest equipment for our patients. And uh, that, that's the important end result of, of gathering all the data and information. Oh, that's awesome. Well, Mike Busticker, thank you so much for talking to me today. We're going to get this spread. We're going to get that information because it really sounds like it's going to help. Yes. All right. Thank you. I appreciate Amy's uh, um, taking this on and, and the Technology Management Council and the subcommittee members and, and all of the participation from those that do the survey. Beautiful. All right.